We're going to jump directly into the new uh, topic, and this time is sustainable finances with our talk, how I can use finances to work a more sustainable world. So for this, I'm going to uh, welcome uh, Diane. Let's see if she's around here. Yeah, can you now request to join the stage, please? Okay, well, meanwhile, to not make you wait longer, I'm just gonna welcome our guest, Mati. So just one second. And we can see him while the young is able to join. Hi, Mati, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you, Carol? Really good, really happy and excited for, for this event that we are having here today. And um, well, I think it's been really interesting and really different topics. So I think it's really nice to see like how the people are connecting the topics. And yeah, so I, I really hope that people are getting a good impression and overall they are learning. So I can see now we got that Diane here. Okay, let me welcome her. Hi, Diane. Hey there. Hey, Coral. Hey, Matty. Hey, Diane. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you really both? Nice. Very good. Really very good. good. I heard you had a really good workshop already. Yes, I did. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, so I hope like the people who really are now here, they attend to the young workshop that was previously, so they can really follow up much better this conversation. So now, Diane, to not make it uh, to last longer, I'm going to just give you the stage, and the stage is going to be all yours, and we can just start. Cool. Uh, thanks so much, Coral, for uh, getting us here and for making sustainable finance part of this zero waste uh, festival. I think it's a topic that is not covered enough, um, and and so it's it's really a pleasure to be here with Matty um, to discuss about it. Um, so just a bit of a few words on uh, the format of this workshop, uh, which is, sorry, it's not a workshop that was my previous uh, thing, but uh, uh, format of this discussion. Um, so we have until 7.20, so that makes 30 minutes, which is uh, very short. Um, we're going to discuss during 20 minutes, so I'll, I'll uh, direct questions to Matty to see about his experience within sustainable finance, and we'll make it about a fireside chat discussion format. And then if you guys have any questions on your side, we'll take, we'll dedicate the 10 last minutes to it um, so that uh, we can answer any questions you have. Um, so... Mati, maybe what we can do is start with uh, introductions and why are we talking about sustainable finance? So I'll let you start. Okay, thank you. Normally it's ladies first, but okay, I can take do the honors this time. So, so thanks for having me, first of all, really appreciate it. And it's a great event, uh, really happy to be part of it. So I'm, I'm a I'm founder of a company called Cooler Future, uh, and we're focusing on on uh, climate impact investing. Um, I'm a born and raised Finn, uh, which is, uh, I'm still in Finland as well, which is why my room might look a little bit darker than for the others, because we're one hour ahead and it's getting dark in the North. Uh, so I've been in startups most of my career. So I've been building companies in all different continents of the world. Uh, and I was the CEO of a technology or software company before. And 2018, I decided to leave my, leave my job to, to do something that's more of a personal passion. And I guess being from Finland, nature and environment has always been really close to my heart. And and to be honest, like for me, uh, I guess I'm I'm a little bit simple man in a way that uh, I, I I only believe when I see, like most people. And I think seeing the impact in the nature and environment really really caught me a few years ago on the topic of uh, climate change. And I was figuring out what is the best ways I can impact on it. And and then. The idea of Cooler Future came about from my co-founder and, and, and we thought maybe we can put our company building skills into, into a better use, uh, so to say, for the planet that is, has, has been before. And, and, and then basically, um, that's, that's my background story. And now, now we're here. 
Cool. Um, so just so that your audience know, um, but I think um, for those who have been part of the workshop, I'm the co-founder of Matterest, and what we're trying to do is um, we're um, creating a platform um, where all the sustainable finan financial options are available for you as a user to um, get to know and um, understand what this complicated world is about. Um, so. Matty, I just wanted to start with a question, and I think it's an, a question that um, a lot of people ask. Um, do I, as a user um, who has a bank, who has a lot of financial product, where can I start with sustainable finance? And what is the first step to take, even if I don't really understand uh, finance? Hmm. That's a that's a really good question. So obviously, at, at I guess you are the better person out of us to talk about kind of your bank account and the footprint around that. Um, but uh, obviously, I can I can cover that part as well. But I think like I think the first thinking really starts from uh, you need to understand that 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 every euro or dollar or yen or whatever currency you you operate with has a footprint. And I think understanding that first is is the uh, first and foremost is the first step you kind of need to do. And if we think about especially like uh, sustainable uh, saving and investing, particularly, I think like well, I think you first need to be clear on your values. Like what are just in the same way as your normal life, you need to also be clear on on what kind of values, what causes you actually want to support. Because like when you start, for example, sustainable investing. Uh, you can kind of invest easily into products that uh, do no harm, so to say. I guess we can talk about ESG and so on later on in this session. Hopefully we have time. But then to really create impact, um, you need to first kind of define uh, what are the causes that, that you want to be true, true about. And, and then I think also when it comes to, to uh, actually investing part, uh, then I think it's also important to learn the basics of investing because there's a lot of um, products, uh, be those investment funds or something else that are sold to consumers currently with different labels of green or ESG or whatever, wind or water or whatever. But if you don't understand uh, the contents, the assets inside those uh, products and, and how those actually drive your values, mm -hmm then it's, 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 you know, you're going to be greenwashed quite easily. So you've been sold something green. So I think, like, first define your values, then obviously understands the basic of fine investing and so on. And, 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 and then, like, what's really important is, is to always look beyond the name of the investment product and understand what's, what's it really been eating, so, so to say. And I think, like, um, one good idea, if we think about investing in companies, for example, as sustainable finance from that perspective, one thing that I always think of is like, co like somehow combining your consumption and investing. So maybe you can pick a company that you already support through your purchase decisions and actually look at what are they doing in terms of sustainability. Like your electricity provider is a great example. Why not look into that and compare it to the others? And then you start understanding Okay. Apart from paying for my electricity to these people, maybe maybe uh, I should invest invest here as well. Um, so yeah, here's maybe a couple of couple of points to to start with. And like I said, you are probably better of us to talk about the bank account side. Yeah, for the bank accounts, I think as you were saying, it's all about um, choosing your values first because different banks actually support different values, and you don't have well, sustainable sustainability is such a, a widespread term, and it may be even too broad. Um, and way uh, between you and I, too much used. Um, but um, so you need to to look into sustainable banks, see what you value most, because some banks are sustainable. But when it talk when you talk about equality between men and women, they're not really great at it. So you really need to know what sustainability is for you and then choose uh, that accordingly. But what we understood through um, our campaign and through our movement is that um, banks, unfortunately, show you not their core impact. So they show you that uh, they recycle more paper. They show you that they 
um, use less water, but then ne they never talk about where your money is going and which companies your money is supporting. So it's Absolutely. a bit of a mismatch. And as you were saying, it's not greenwashing. And I think it's a question that I want to come back uh, to, ne uh, not next, but afterwards. But it's not about greenwashing when uh, banks communicate. It's more about misleading the customer because there's a bit of a finance, there's there's a lot of jargon, a complication around finance, and it's saying you don't understand what how a bank bank works. So let me mislead you and misguide you and talk you talk to you how about about how we recycle up our paper instead of what is the real impact of your money. Yeah, absolutely, so, and 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 yeah, I mean, I think you and me have spoken about this before as well. So it's super interesting. So I I, I mean, what we found quite shocking when doing research as well is that. How many people there is out there who actually, when you start talking about the footprint and the impact of your money, people who say, well, I don't invest, my money is on my bank account, so it doesn't really have a footprint, where you kind of unfortunately need to correct the people and go, like, well, yeah, there is green options out there as well, but generally, if you're with one of the bigger banks, your money yeah. actually has a massive footprint, but and actually only by taking action and taking control of your own money, you can define like who's who's benefiting from it so to say yeah i think you i think the only way your money is um right now doesn't have an impact is if you if you have it under your mattress and even then um it can have a negative impact because you can support amazing projects with your money that could have an even positive impact a more positive impact that you're not um basically having um, your money put into. Yeah, and anyway. I guess the metal or the paper money has a footprint as well. So we could, but let's, not, has, maybe, yeah. let's not maybe go there. <laughs> it's not the same footprint. Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah. It's true. I agree. Anyways, but I wanted to talk, um, I, I wanted maybe to put another question on the table more because we talk, and I think it's, it's re very relevant here as we're in a zero waste festival. Um, where we talk a lot about consuming sustainably. Um, now, what did you? Why did you look at sustainable finance? And because it's not a topic that people think about, um, and not about. And why didn't you look at something more about consuming sustainably? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, uh, well, firstly, I can. I just want to say from my own perspective that. I think all actions count and, 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 and I think no one should be building out products that kind of buy your sins off from something else. So, so I think when we talk about sustainable finance, what I want to make clear that I still believe that regardless of how well and how impactfully you invest or use your money, you should still be doing the consumption, the smart consumption actions as well. So I'm a big believer in that. Um, I think like the, the, the why we went 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 here is is kind of what was touched upon early on already that there's a huge amount of education actually be to be done, especially within the kind of retail customers, and 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 through that there's a there's a there's a huge amount of impact actually that that could be done, and 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 also I think finance is an industry that is uh, uh, difficult to change so. I don't know if it's my personality of trying to do difficult things, but I kind of like the challenge, to be honest. Um, but overall, I, I don't think it's there's a huge difference. I mean, it, when you buy products, you in a way support the company and investing is the same. So you can you can decide where you invest in to some extent. Uh, but the challenge, I think, with investing is that if you do nothing, someone else do, will do or spend the money or invest the money on your behalf. So again, if we compare with consumption, it's like, it's like instead of you going to the grocery store and buying the, the climate friendly products, the vegan products, for example, like a vegan diet, you instead you give someone 100 euros and you say, OK, please feed me and they will bring you like steak and cheese. Right. Um, so um, and, and then like finally, like what's quite interesting. Uh, yes, there's different ways to calculate these and so on. But when we started looking into the especially the sustainable investing part, uh, like I said, the impact opportunity is massive. Like uh, if you like avoid one transatlantic flight per year, it's like less than one ton impact on your personal footprint. If you switch to an electric car from an average European car, it's a little bit over one ton. But if you have 10,000 euro invested in like a MSCI World Index fund, 
and you would manage to turn that actually carbon um, zero, that, that portfolio, the impact of that is nearly two tons. And if we think that the average German has almost 20,000 euros saved, uh, everybody can do the maths from that. So I, I, to conclude here, sorry for my long monologue, uh, I think it's a maximum impact combined with intellectual challenge, I would say. That's cool. Yeah, I, 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 I completely follow you. I also think that it's very much an untapped, um, unt untapped world. And I think that when you look at everything linked to institutional investors and not people like you and I investing, there's a lot going on in the sustainable finance field and it's growing at a rapid pace. And when you look at retail investors, it's just a lack of education, which refrains everyone um, to, to take their own steps. And it's just very complicated because it's already finance. And, and if you add the sustainability layer on top of it, it's just, it's just uh, way too much to handle. So mm. I think um, it, it's, it's great to have you here. And I really liked the fact that you said, if you don't choose where you invest, someone else will for you. Um, and so I, I think that's 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 a great um, line to to really stress the fact that um, if you do nothing, your money will be invested, and you don't know where it will go. But if you want it to be sustainable, it's up to you to make those choices and 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 choose where it goes. Absolutely, and it's. I mean, we we say it's complicated, and in a way, of course, well, everything is complicated, but. It's not rocket science. It's 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 the same, you know. It's in a similar way. It's reading the packaging of uh, of a product in the store. I mean, I hope no one is buying a store just because it says CO two free or something like that. You still check the packaging and see what's inside that, you know, uh, food packaging. I mean, it's the same thing. You just need to look at the packaging of the product where you invest in or, or the bank account that your money is in. Yeah. I'm I actually going to follow up on um on Christina who's 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 not asking a question but she's talking about SoCap um and it's the largest largest invest impact investing community and I, I wanted to ask you um there's impact investing, there's ESG, there is um what do you believe in and um what do you think which of these things do you think needs still still needs improvement on? <clears throat> Yeah, that's that's a. I, I guess we could talk about this for a couple of hours. To be honest, I, I think uh, um, if we think from individual, like a retail investor perspective, like what can what can we do as individuals? I think uh, it really depends. Like we already discussed, it depends on our values, and then uh, unfortunately, the, the the which kind of impact products, so to say, we have access to, and 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 what makes sense is also dependent on the amount of money we can invest, right? So we have spoken with some high net worth individuals who say, well, I get this impact investment service from my bank and they are private wealth customers at UBS. So unfortunately, I, you know, if, if I, I can invest, let's say 50 euros, then maybe I don't get the same service. But like, I think if we start from the, the, the basis level, we have the ESG, which you already mentioned. So we have the environment that shows on governance uh, type of uh, how to put it, non-financial factors that are used to filter investments. And, and and you will see a lot of funds actually built with that. And it's like a generally accepted framework. Um, I think the, 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 the good thing there is that I think it's, um, it's quite accessible. So actually it's becoming the norm also through EU legislation is becoming the norm that, that, that is required for, for, for investments. So that's a positive thing, but I guess the negative thing there is, uh, sorry, one more positive thing that it's 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 super easy access, right? So whatever bank your customer with and so on, you basically will have some ESG funds. Uh, I think the challenge is that that's kind of doing, um, that's kind of looking at companies who are not doing anything bad, so to say. So they are kind of like filtering out the worst, <laughs> worst in in a way from some sustainability perspective. So I, I, and obviously it relies a lot on the company on data and reporting. It's a lot built on processes and it doesn't really drive impact. So when you drive to an ESG, uh, when you invest into an ESG fund, generally you should be able to believe that nothing bad is done with your money, but also you're not really doing impact. It's not like you're reducing emissions or, or something like that. And, and the other challenge with ESG is then that 
it's uh, it's used in sometimes in a wrong way. So uh, you know, I've seen ESG funds that are labeled as climate impact funds, and there's no climate impact. It's just ESG. Um, but I don't want to bash it fully because I think it's a I, I think it's a really really good starting point. I think what the good funds do is that they have the ESG criteria, but then again, they have, we talked about values a couple of times, they have selected one or two things that they specifically focus on. So that being the, the clean water or clean energy or something like that. And, and, and they can actually measure and, and, and show some of the impact that they actually do. And um, yeah, then you obviously have all kinds of different products. You have project finance, you can go to you know, lend a hand or Ecolic or something like that, where you actually do direct project finance, you finance a, a solar plant or, or something like that. So I think there's the ESG is kind of the starting point for me. And then the more you get into it, the more uh, funds you have to invest, the wider you can actually go based on the values. Okay. So you would suggest that even though, um, I mean, you, if I if I could summarize your answer, it's still do not trust the labels, but go and see what what the label means, but also read what is on the label. Absolutely. Further. So so don't don't blindly invest in a, something that says ES, ESG on it. Um, you still understand like that's what I said in the start that with any sustainable in, or any investing really, I think you should understand the basic of the assets, the underlying assets within the product that you invest in. So if you invest in a fund that invests in companies, I think uh, even though banks are selling to you the idea that, okay, ESG is sustainable, leave it with us, nothing to worry about, I would encourage you to actually look under the hood, so to say, and understand at least some of the companies that they are investing in. So you actually know who your money is is kind of going to. Cool. Um, then because it's we have only 10 minutes left, what I can do is uh, take the questions from the audience. If they're not enough. Um, I'm, I have plenty on my site. Um, so maybe we can start with a question from Varun. Um, he's asking what is the difference between a green business, um, companies which are supporting sustainability, and companies which are into sectors like renewable energy waste, and waste management. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly. Um, do, you, do, you, do you, Matty? Can you so it was, what's the difference between green business? Um, green business, companies who are supporting sustainability and companies who are in the sector like renewable energy and waste management. Um, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question either correctly. Maybe what we can do is ask Varun to maybe um, clarify. And then in the meantime, we can take the question by Raul. Um, so you mentioned then there is a need for retail investors to be educated about ESG. Do you think there's also a need for financial brokers or, or consultant independent or financial institutions to be in educated on the subjects? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's already partly happening. And, and, and uh, I think also something that, Diane, you, you know very well through your business is that there is new regulation coming up, for example, that demands the financial advisors to, to actually ask not just about your kind of risk and return profile, but also about the uh, uh, the, the the values or you know the sustainability focus that you actually want to have. So actually, this type of regulation is coming. Um, I think the challenge, however, with all of this regulation and so on, is that the market is so big that making then the concrete change out of that is is kind of still going to change, like take time. And we like it or not, I think it needs to start from us. The consumers even this movement that's my belief as well so if we don't demand um to, to for investment to go according to our certain values according to certain criteria it the thing won't fully change but uh but to raul's question uh, absolutely there is the need and and luckily there is quite a lot happening with the eu regulation mifid 2 and everything related to that 
Yeah, if I can add, um, there's um, there's a, a great research institute called uh, Tudor Green Investing Initiative, and they actually did mystery shopping visits to financial advisors to understand how much knowledge was there on sustainable finance and what those sustainable that what those financial advisors said when um, when the user basically asked about sustainable finance, and they realized that. Um, well, most of them did not know anything about it and were more um, saying to the user what he or she wanted to hear. Mm. Um, and so that is off, that is for sure a huge thing to change. Um, and right now what we are doing at Matavest is that we are um, basically creating a, a network of financial advisors who understand financial sustainable finance and who can guide you through sustainable investments um, because we also saw that problem and we can see that uh, users really want to be advised not only on their, on, on their return and risk profile, etc., but also on which investments match their values. So... So that's something that we are doing, but there's but there's more and more of that. Yeah, and of course, there's a lot of regulation also related to the uh, institutional investors. So, for example, the people who actually invest our pension money uh, and and certain part of it need, needing to go into into uh, into sustainable sustainable finance again. It's more on the ESG focus, but I guess it's at least a step towards the towards the right direction. So, I think overall, if we I think positive there's a lot of good things happening out there unfortunately what i believe is that the regulation never isn't fast enough uh, and 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 therefore i strongly believe that it's really important in here just like in consumption that us as retail investors kind of demand for transparency and 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 do our homework instead of you know really understanding where our money is is going into yeah, I fully agree. Um, okay, so then we have a question. Uh, okay, Varun is then cl clarifying questions. So he's saying there are multinational companies like Unilever or Pepsi, which might do a little bit on the environment. Um, and there are companies which are clean tech like Tesla. When you say sustainable finance, do you invest in Tesla or do you invest in companies like Unilever? Okay, I guess the last thing we do, should do is is to give investment advice. So I'm I'm not going to say if I would invest in Tesla or Unilever, but um, I think uh, sustainable finance is is a wide topic. So again, I come back to the values. Uh, I think like at, at, if I give you an example from what we do at Cooler Future, so we we have taken a, a, a pure climate uh, climate impact focus. So we actually, while we look at the overall sustainability rating of the company to make sure that kind of nothing evil, so to say, uh, slips into our portfolio, we have taken the leading metric of uh, climate change and specifically the CO2 uh, emissions, actually. And that's the one that is our driving force that we look at. And especially we look at the forward-looking reduction of that CO2. So <clears throat> uh, we we kind of we try to support the companies that have made the real commitment into reducing their carbon footprint. They have a proof of doing that for the last two years and they have a validated plan for doing that for the next five to 10 years because we believe that you know those are not only the ones who are going to help save the planet and we should really support, but to be honest, I think those companies are also the ones who will be hopefully financially the winners because they are prepared. And, and, and therefore, we, we actually call this climate impact investing. So I would say it's a subset of sustainable finance. So I guess to answer the question here is, do we invest in Tesla or Unilever? I think if both of them get a decent sustainability rating, which um, I can't remember from the top of my head, but uh, at least one of them gets scaringly a good one, um, uh, then we can kind of make sure that they are not doing anything bad. But then if our focus is, okay, we want to save the planet from climate change, then we actually need to look deeper and understand really the emission and how they plan to reduce that. I'm I'm, yeah. not, I'm, I'm trying to, like, I hope I answered the question, Varun. Um, if I didn't, you can just email me. <laughs> 
But I, I totally agree. I, I think, Varun, there's also um, sustainable finances is, is so broad um, because sustainability itself is, is huge. Um, so sustainable finance is, has huge as sustainability. And if, if you want to invest in Tesla or Unilever, it's your choice. It's more that it, it's, it depends how you look at sustainabilities. And when we talk about it, it's more which shade of green are you? Are you fully, um, fully focused on uh, the impact? And, and even then you might not be looking at the stock market, but more at private project, impact investing, et cetera. Or you might just be looking at some uh, publicly listed companies. And there, it's also your call which sector you want to invest your money in and what values you want um, your money to, to, to go along. So I don't think sustainable finance is one or the other. It's both. It just depends how you want to look at it and which choices you want to take. Absolutely. I, I think, again, here, the good comparison is, is the consumption side. So I think there as well, you kind of like buying a product, you're necessarily not solving all the problems of the world by buying that one product, but you buy it with a certain uh, values based on the certain values that you, for example, has. And the same same kind of applies here as well. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I think we have just one minute left. Maybe what we can do is leave uh, one piece of advice for people watching the session if they want to start with sustainable finance or if they just want to take action. Um, what would you leave them with, Matty? One, can I, can I say multiple things? So yes. This is one I need to say. So I, I think generally, like, again, since I'm coming from the investment perspective, I think there's the basics of investing. So I, I think good good idea is actually to start following your consumption for one month and take 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 the you know conclusions on your unsustainable beha behavior. Uh, don't cut everything because you also need to to enjoy life. So I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, but sometimes you need to enjoy certain things if you if you really like it. Uh, and then uh, look at the amount of money you could actually safely safely invest without worrying about it. And, and then you sign up for some sustainable finance related content like My Money, My Planet. You can join our newsletter as well if you want. Guardian does great, great content. Bloomberg does great content. Yeah. And, 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 and then you pick two or three companies or investment products and you start following them and look at what they're actually doing to produce the emissions. And, 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 and then depending on the investable assets, you actually just start. And, and, and actually my main point is that you just start because as I said in the start, if you don't take control of the kind of footprint of your of your investing, then then no one is gonna do it. Well, someone will do it for you and it won't be sustainable. Yeah. Sorry, that well, was a one point. <laughs> I think that, that's a great point. And I think um one thing that I would encourage everyone in this workshop to do is is talk about sustainable finance because I think it's it's something that is just not covered enough. Uh, and it's not as sexy, if I may say, as zero, as zero waste, honesty, to talk about. But it's very important. And I think it's, it's as Maddie was saying, it's up to us as consumers to ask for more, um, more transparency, more sustainability, more regulation. And I think if the start, if it, it just starts by talking about it. So, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Maddie, um, for you, uh, your insights and for being here. And thanks to the Zero Waste Fe uh, Festival for covering sustainable finance, but also for inviting um, Maddie and, and me here on stage. Um, so, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, and I can see Coral coming back. Hi, yes, I'm back. <laughs> so thank you so much. I think it has been really, really interesting. And as you see, there's not so many sustainable events covering this topic. And I think it's really important. And actually, it's you, Diane, who made me realize how important is this topic. So I think it's fair that we had you today here. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to you, too. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.